Hello and welcome to Vodcast 2.1. This is going to be a one-slide Vodcast, and it overviews the big picture of solid Earth. Let's break down and analyze the rock cycle. There's a misconception that Earth's surface and interior are static and unchanging, but the rock cycle shows us that solid Earth is dynamic and constantly changing. This picture is without question the most important image I'm going to show you in this particular chapter. Let's begin our discussion of the rock cycle by looking at liquid hot magma. And it saddens me that some of you are probably too young to get that Austin Powers reference. Anyway, magma is extremely hot liquid rock that occurs under the surface of Earth. It's important that you know the difference between magma and lava. Once magma reaches Earth's surface, we call it lava. But so long as the hot liquid rock is underground, we call it magma. Now, eventually, molten hot rock will cool down. And when it cools to a certain temperature, it will solidify. Whenever magma or lava cool and solidify, igneous rock is formed. This image shows two specific types of igneous rock. There's intrusive igneous rock, which forms under Earth's surface, and there's extrusive igneous rock, which forms at or above Earth's surface. Now, over time, rock can get broken down. There are two types of weathering we're gonna talk about in future podcasts. There's chemical weathering, and there's mechanical weathering. For now, just know that weathering means we're gonna break rocks into smaller pieces. And once those pieces are small enough, the rock can be transported. It can slide down hillsides and mountainsides. It can be carried through rivers and streams. And whenever weathering breaks down rocks that are transported and deposited, we call that sediment. Over time, that sediment can settle to the bottom of rivers and streams and other bodies of water. And through the process of lithification, which is the compacting and the cementing of those sediment pieces, sedimentary rock is formed. Now, sedimentary rock can be transformed into metamorphic rock, especially in regions of mountain building and other tectonic activity. The three primary agents of metamorphism are heat, pressure, and chemically active fluids. So if sedimentary rock gets squeezed and reshaped, it ultimately changes to metamorphic rock. And just like the circle of life, metamorphic rock can melt which reforms magma, and then the entire cycle can start again. So if you follow the purple arrows around in a nice circular pattern, you see the traditional rock cycle. But it's really not that simple, because if we go back and look at igneous rock, it's possible for igneous rock to skip the sedimentary rock path, undergo metamorphosism, and form metamorphic rock. It's also possible for intrusive igneous rock to remelt, which causes the reformation of magma. If we go back and look at the deposition of sediment, which is basically the depositing of sediment on the floor of a body of water, you can form sedimentary rock, but that sedimentary rock doesn't have to go straight into metamorphosism. Through uplift and weathering and transportation and deposition, you can essentially undo lithification and go right back to the sediment step. This picture provides a general overview of the three types of rock that we're going to talk about in the upcoming vodcast, namely igneous rock, sedimentary rock, and metamorphic rock. We'll go into much greater detail on those three types of rocks in our future videos. But for now, the big picture idea is, viewed over very long time spans, rocks are constantly forming, changing, and reforming. Solid Earth is not static. It's constantly evolving, and it's been doing so for billions and billions of years. Okay, that concludes this vodcast. I strongly recommend you diagram this out in your notebook, label all the arrows shown, and try to gain a very strong conceptual understanding for what this very important image is depicting. So until next time, I'll see you in Vodcast 2.2, which overviews igneous rock.